I express their appreciation to you for your presence today, for your kindness, for your cards, for your visits, for your prayers. We also express appreciation to the hospital personnel that has provided care, the doctors and nurses and family members and friends that have done the same thing. We welcome you and thank you for all that you have done on behalf of the family. We're here for three reasons today. We're here to celebrate the transformed life, and I underline transformed. We're here to celebrate the transformed life of Junior Howard Hodges. He is survived by his daughter and son-in-law, Deborah and Leonard Shoemaker II, three sons, Steve, and Vicki, Jack, and Tammy, James, and Sandra, seven grandchildren, numerous great-grandchildren, one sister and brother-in-law, Phyllis and Marvin Mooney, and sister-in-law, Margie McGuire. Not only are we here to celebrate, but we're also here to express our love to the family and encouragement to them. Also, we're here to ask God for help. There's no other place to turn in this time of grieving and a broken heart and sorrow. There's no other place to turn than to God. He helps us deal with our pain, our broken heart, and this process of grieving. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that we can call upon your word. Thank you for your presence that we already sense. Thank you for the way that you have been with this family in these past days, this past week. We ask once again for your blessings upon this service. Let what we say and do glorify you. Let what we say and do be pleasing in your sight as we celebrate the life of one of your children that you have changed. We thank you for the power that you have to do all these things and so much more. We thank you now in advance for what you're going to do for us in this service. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
So I'll hold you as close as I can Longing for the day when I see your face again But until then, God must need another angel around the throne tonight Just jealous of the angels around the throne tonight, singing hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Just jealous of the angels around the throne When our hearts are broken, when we face challenges beyond our strength and we're able to handle, and we search for help and uh, guidance, the Word of God is the greatest avenue that we have to turn to. The Word of God is still relevant today. It has not changed, even though people try to water it down, change it, make it say something else than what the original 40 writers spoke under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit of God. The Word of God, I describe it, I just, just summarize it this way. It tells us, this book tells us the greatest story that's ever been told about the greatest man that ever walked on earth who offers us the greatest gift. If you want to know more about those things, read your Bible. Today, I have two passages that I want to read. I know you've heard these before, but many times when I read another passage of Scripture for the second, third, fourth time, I realize that I missed something the first time and God speaks to me again and anew. It's my prayer God will speak words to you each of you, especially the family, that God will give you comfort from his word during this time. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. From the New Testament, the words of Jesus. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. And if it was not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. And receive you unto myself, 
that where I am, there you may be also. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. And in a little while, the world seeth me no more, but you see me because I live, you shall live also. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let your, not, not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. May God add his blessings to the precious word of God. You are here because your life has been touched by Junior, by Pops, by a changed man. And he's touched our lives in so many different ways. Debbie's going to come and share with us something that she wrote in honor of her dad. And we take these words of tribute as a gift from her to each of us today. Debbie? Debbie? This is in honor of you, Dad. Amen. Amen. The dad we never had. Our childhood was basically work, little play. Always be early to every place, every day. Dad was a strict disciplinarian, tanning our hide if we four kids didn't follow his rules and in God abide. We all graduated from high school, one to college, and three joined the work pool. Dad was so pleased with our success, but shared a praying as we each did digress. This past year was one of loneliness and test, since no one could replace mom with whom Dad had been blessed. Yet God had a loving purpose for this last year, drawing Dad closer to him, and we kids became so dear. Dad confessed and apologized for the wrongs of the past. He shared many times the same stories. But boy, did we have a blast. Yes, this last year was tough on our dad. Yet, he became the dad we never had. So I plead with each one of you this day Please consider, confess, and go God's way. Then together we'll share the good news that makes us glad, perhaps being to someone, the mom, dad, mom, friend, or dad they never had. Amen. Thank you, Debbie. Wonderful, wonderful. We're just going to take a moment, if there anyone else, just like to stand and to speak words of tribute, give a witness of how Junior has touched your life. Yes.
Amen. Thank you, Sybil. Anyone else? Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Vicky. Thank you. Anyone else? Don't want to leave you out. But yes. Thank you, Toby. All right. Thank you for sharing that. I'm glad for the smile that it's put on our faces because he was a changed man. And he touched many, many, many lives in a very special way. God bless you.
Thank you, Joyce and Dennis. Appreciate your ministry with us today. Let me say at the beginning, it is a privilege and an honor to have a small part in this homegoing celebration. As I looked back over the, the years, uh, I have known Junior for 39 years almost. And that means he's known me for 39 years almost. And the good news is, he was always my friend. He never left me during them 39 years. He was always with me. No matter where I would see him or run into him. Uh, for that. And so it's just a tremendous privilege and an honor to have been his pastor in so many different ways. And he knew me when I was assistant pastor at First Wesley Church, and thank you for those that are here from there. There's people here from several churches. I acknowledge that, and thank you for taking time to come and show your support. Uh, it's great to see the body of Christ working together for a common purpose. But when I look back over the life, uh, qualities, he was a faithful worker, faithful husband, faithful father, he was honest, if you said you were going to do something, he expected you to do it. If he said he was going to do something, you could take it to the bank. He was going to do it. Uh, he was part of the generation that came up when not a whole lot and things were hard and tight and, and uh, kind of challenging. And uh, it made him a man's man. And uh, it has affected him in so many ways and with a work ethic, it's unbelievable. And uh, as you already heard, I asked the family when I met with them, well, tell me some of his hobbies. Work. <laughs> what, did, what was his hobby? What did he enjoy doing? Work. That was it. On occasions, he enjoyed washing his car. Every time he bring that car to church, man, it was shining. It looked good. It looked good. He enjoyed gospel music. He enjoyed eating. He enjoyed hanging out with the guys at the coffee shop and the donut place. I had an opportunity to be there with them one time. And, uh, you know, elderly men can just be silly. You know that? <laughs> I wish you could have been there. I don't have time to tell you all the, all the stories. And uh, somebody mentioned that early. It's famous words. I may have told you this before. And then he'll start telling you the same story that he already told you two dozen times. I may have told you this before, but I'm going to tell you anyway. We needed to hear it again. And I'm glad he did that. I'm so glad he did that. He loved his family because of the change that, that Christ brought in him. And many times we were together, he would bring your names up. He loved you. He prayed for you. And I discovered in the midst of all of that, that Junior Hodges was not a perfect man. And uh, maybe I should have said at the beginning of this service, all the perfect people just wait for us out in the parking lot. There's nobody perfect. There's only one perfect man that walked on earth, and his name was Jesus Christ. But because of what Jesus Christ came to do, he has made a lot of change transform men. And I thank God for that. He was married 65 years. What a blessing he's been to us at our church in so many ways. Usher, choir, work days, softball fan. And I don't know if he taught the boys how to play softball. If he did, he did a good job. Uh, these boys could play some ball. And uh, it's not like some of them just go out and just get dirty. You know, some of them just get dirty and make it look like you've been playing. These guys got dirty because they were playing. And, and uh, I think Jack was eating dirt sometimes in some softball games, <laughs> sliding into second base and, and all that. And uh, George had to get him up and keep him, get him going again and all that. And Larry, uh, all the connections, it's just wonderful. It's wonderful. He served as an usher for communion, and uh, I'm privileged 
<clears throat> to wear the, one of his ties that he wore when he served our congregation with communion. Thank you, Debbie. This is going to be a special keepsake. Thank you for sharing that with me. Junior, my, there's so many things. I wish he'd have wrote a book of what it means to be on time. <laughs> Being on time does not mean walking in 30 seconds before the organist starts playing or the preacher gets up. It means to be early, doesn't it? Yeah. And uh, patience sometimes was not one of his gifts. Would you agree with that? Amen. <laughs> when it was time to go, when it was time to go, it was time to go. And many times it would say, come on, Mama, let's go, or come on, Ma, let's go. Uh, and that was it. I mean, let's go. It was, he was gone. He was so, so faithful in church events and fundraisers. He loved a chili cook-off. I saw that man sitting at a table eating bowl after bowl of chili at our chili cook-off with a napkin wiping his forehead and the back of his neck. That's how hot he was eating it. I couldn't believe it. I said, Junior, you okay? Yeah, can I get another bowl? I said, sure, help yourself. I'm not going to eat it, but you help yourself. And he would just wipe his forehead. Wonderful memories. Wonderful memories. If you called the house, you had about a 1% chance that he was going to answer the phone. <laughs> if he didn't recognize your number, it's not happening. And you can leave him at If he didn't recognize your number, he's not going to answer. But if he did, he would answer or he would call back later. And all the stories and memories that we have bless our hearts today. They are gifts from God. And I mentioned what a privilege it has been for me and Joyce to be their pastoral family for many years. And the influence They've known my wife all of her life. The way God works, Joyce's dad was junior Sunday school teacher at the church. And I've seen more and more and more of the characteristics that Harry Wilson had as a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ in Junior Hodges. God works in ways we don't understand at the timetable we don't understand but God is alive and well and working in the hearts and lives of people who will allow him to work in their heart if we say no if we rebel if we reject he's not gonna he's not gonna force anything on us but if we open the door and let him come in, he will come in. As I was preparing, what can I say from the word of God? On a recent phone call, I called the hospital. I talked to the nurse. And uh, she told me, Mr. Hodges is asleep. I said, please don't wake him up. Please don't wake him up. Let him sleep. And I got to thinking about that. My other, my other visits with him uh, on the phone were very enjoyable. And even in, uh, at the church, talking about a faithful giver, one of the strongest con consistent givers. Several weeks ago, he just got out of the hospital and it was a must-do thing. It was a mission that he was on. Debbie, take me to the church. Two reasons. 
He wanted to give a tithing check, and he wanted to give a check for the uh, building fund. And we sat down in the foyer and talked a little bit. He said, Pastor Ricardo, I'm not using my cane anymore. I have to use this walker. I said, that's okay, Junior. That's all right. He said, but I wanted to come and drop this off. I believe it was a, t a way that Junior was expressing his love and devotion to God in a life of obedience and doing something that God asks believers to do, to bring the tithe into the storehouse and gifts are over and above that. And he did that so much. Uh, you ever heard the concept, coffee can money? He ought to write the book. He ought to write the book on it. He'd take his change, collect it, save it, bring it in for a special project. After he'd get a bunch, he'd roll it up. And uh, I had the privilege of giving, I don't know, about eight, ten different rolls of coins to our treasure yesterday that came from him. So there's so many things, and as I was thinking about his life, what is it that I could say that's going to make sense of all of this? Well, I felt directed to this, to this verse, then that led me to another verse. So I, I just pray it will encourage you. Acts chapter 2, 17. And it shall be in the last days, God says that I will pour forth my spirit upon all mankind and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and young men shall see visions and your old men shall have dreams when I called him and the nurse said that he was asleep I wonder if that was the time that God was speaking to him in a new way in a special way to reaffirm and affirm the transformation that was made in his life. Junior was a changed man. He was a man that loved God. And our, for the last, I don't know, the last year, last nine months, especially six months, three months, every time that we would meet, every time we'd go out to eat, every time that we were together, he always ended up sharing how much he loved God and tears would come down his face. When he was in the hospital, people, the nurses would come and work with him and it was a very common practice, consistent. He told me about it. Family has told me about it. He would ask the, the medical staff, do you know my friend Jesus? Junior Hodges. What a legacy. What an example that he has left for all of us. Do you know my friend Jesus? That's what he would ask the medical staff, anybody he'd had an opportunity to. And another part of that conversation in the foyer at our church, he said, I want Joyce to sing the song that you just heard her sing. I'd love to tell you about Jesus. So I don't know if this dream put Jesus on his mind. I don't know how God works and facilitated all of that. I just know that, that Junior uh, had a, a very special, real experience there's no doubts there's no hesitancy he is in the presence of the Lord he has received his heavenly reward because one day he made a choice to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and master of his life he confessed his sins he told God he was sorry he confessed he made wrongs right and became the man that God wanted him to be what a testimony what a testimony my challenge for you are you the man or the woman that God wants you to be today?
Take it from his life, his example, his legacy. Be the man and the woman that God wants you to be. The title of this message is just simply this, ready to go. Ready to go. My last conversations in person on the phone. Pastor, I'm ready. Pastor, I'm ready. So I don't know if there was dreams that God was preparing him. I just, I just believe, I just believe that God has the ability to give us dying grace. And I believe God implemented that into his heart and life and his mind. And he was ready to go. He had, he had hung in there. He had suffered. He went through, didn't like the hospital and all that kind of stuff. Um, almost got Vicki locked up a couple of times trying to get her to bust him out of the hospital. <laughs> I'm ready to go. Get me out of here. Let's go. And uh, thank the Lord he protected Vicki and helped her, gave her wisdom to take care of him. And God worked all of that out. But because whatever it was that God spoke to him and gave him the affirmation and the confirmation of being a changed man, this is a result of it. Second Timothy 4 7. It's in Second Timothy 4 6. I'm ready to go. Departure time had come. Paul was telling them that. Departure time has come. Departure. It's an it's a, a illustration of pulling up stakes that hold down a, sti- uh, a tent. And it's the same thing as to un- loosening the ropes that would. Uh, secure large ships at the dock to keep them from drifting away to the park. You had to undo the ropes and whatever. Spiritually speaking, he was ready to go. You say, how can you say that? Three reasons. He fought a good fight. He fought his fight. He fought a good fight with declining health. And challenges that he was facing that did not cause him to waver. It did not cause him to doubt or give up. He was a soldier for the Lord Jesus Christ. Every, every moment. He was a soldier for the Lord Jesus Christ because he fought a good fight. The second thing, he finished his course. He ran his race. Not my race, your race. We can't run anybody else's race. He ran the race that God wanted him to run. We may have questions and wonder about that. I do. One of the things that he told me several times in our last conversation, Pastor, I want to get back to the choir. I want to get back to the choir. I want to, I want to be a part of uh, that ministry. And uh, God's sovereignty, it didn't happen the way that we wished it would have. But you know, God did something better. He put him in the heavenly choir with the angels and he is singing his heart out he is singing his heart out he fought a good fight he ran his course his race and the third thing he kept the faith he kept the faith when it would have been so easy to give up when it would have been easy to quit he kept the faith that's recorded in this book called the Holy Word of God. And many times he would talk about that. He would talk about values and principles and and, and important things that were not just important to him, but he was sharing it and telling it to other people to make a difference in their life. This declining health all this crazy stuff with COVID-19, all the restrictions and shutdowns and all the changes, it did not take his joy away. I believe it made it stronger because he knew. I think he saw in a dream and he saw himself being, Junior, you're ready. Get prepared. I'm coming to get you. I'm going to be sending angels to get you soon. He was ready to go weeks ago, months ago. He was ready to go. We're not wishing that on anybody. He was not saying, 
that he, was, that he wanted to leave, to get away from anybody. He wanted to go be with the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what he told the, at the hospital when he was in the bed, raising his hands up, waiting on the Lord to reach down and grab him, the angels to take him. He was ready to go because he had made things right with God. I thank God the legacy that's left because he was ready. He fought a good fight. He ran his course. He kept the faith. What a challenge for all of us. What a challenge for each one of us. In closing, just let me ask you a question, a very important question. Have you thought much about dying? What's going to happen? Maybe some of the details, when, how. Have you thought much about dying? You know, dying is a fact of life, according to the word of God. We all have an appointment with death. We don't know when, we don't know how, we don't know the details. But we do have an appointment with death. It's final. We're minded about how sh uh, short life is. The Bible even says it's a shadow, that it's a vapor. It's here and it's gone. And we wonder where it went to. Have you thought about dying? Well, this book, the Word of God, tells us at the end of life, we're going to spend eternity in one or two places. We're going to spend eternity in heaven because it's a prepared place for prepared people. So what do you mean by that? People that trust Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. A prepared place for prepared people. For people who believe that Jesus is the only way to heaven. We're living in days and times that where there's, every, there's so many ways people say to get to heaven. You can't earn your way. You can't buy your way. You can't, you can't be so good that God says, well, come on in. That's not going to happen. How do you know? John 14, 6. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but through me. It's a relationship with him. Heaven is a prepared place for people who have made the Lord Jesus Christ Lord and Savior. But the other option that the Bible talks about is a place of, called hell. It's a place for those who reject Jesus Christ. It's a place for people that do not have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a place of separation for God for eternity, forever and forever and forever. It's a place of pain, torment, suffering, anguish, regrets. It's a terrible place. But because God is a loving God and he wants to make sure that people who claim to follow him, follow him. He does not force the decision on us. He allows us to make the decision. If we want to have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, he gives us the opportunity through his son, Jesus Christ. He gives us an opportunity to make that decision. I don't know if you've thought much about that. I do not want to do. I do, do not want to do anything uh, that would would not be right. But let me say this: if anything that's been said, and you do not have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, you do not have that assurance that when you die, that you have the assurance that you would go to heaven like this man did. He could not wait. To see Jesus and to see Doris. He couldn't wait. But that's only possible because they had a relationship with Jesus Christ. If you do not have that, if you would see me sometime today before the, uh, we walk away from the graveside, I'd love to talk to you. I have a little booklet I'd like to give to you for you to read. You take it and read it. I do not want your, I don't want your decision to become uh, a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ just to be an emotional thing. I want it to be a sincere thing, a relationship, because you see a need of having Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. 
Well, if Junior could talk to us one more time. As I said, he's, I'm ready. I was ready. I couldn't wait to get up here. It's beautiful. It's great. Me and Ma have been having a good time. We've been hanging out in the choir with the angels, and she's been fixing the robes for all the angels that needed him in and, and all the sewing that needed to be done, anything that needed to be done, whatever. If there's a coffee shop in heaven, Junior found it. <laughs> if there's donuts there, he found it. I don't know if there is or not, but he's enjoying it, having a great time. But he said, I'm ready. And he would say, don't worry about me. And I think he would give us the, the words, you come be with me. I'm not coming back. I love you. I care about you. I, I'm not coming back. I've had the opportunity to sit at the feet of Jesus. And you do too. With that relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I think he would just say, make sure you're right with God. Make wrongs right with God and people. And live for God. Live for God. Our church has two empty vacant seats because two workers have received their heavenly reward. And I wonder who's going to sit in their places? Who's going to take their spot or take their seat? and ministry at our church or any other church that preaches the good news of Jesus Christ. Well, how happy, what a blessing it would be to have a family member or family members or friends be transformed and changed. And because of the legacy that's been lived by both of your parents and your friends, Junior and Doris, that you become a soldier, a worker for the Lord Jesus Christ. He would get the glory and honor for it. Thank God for his word. Thank God for the resurrection power to be able to change lives, to change sinful man into a new creature because they received the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, if God has spoken to you and you want to know more about a relationship with him, you connect with me and I'll give you a little booklet for you to read. And I'll be praying for you. My challenge is this. I challenge you to live your life in such a way that when it comes to an end, you too will have made a difference for Jesus Christ. I challenge you to live your life in such a way that you too will have made a difference for Jesus Christ. Junior Hodges made a difference for Jesus Christ and many, many, many people. Heavenly Father, thank you for your presence. Thank you for the testimony and the witness for Mr. Hodges. Would you continue to speak into our hearts and lives truth that we need to hear. And be with us as we go to the graveside. As we conclude this service there. Thank you for the great love that you give to your children. Thank you that there's men and women that receive it and it changes their heart and life and they become a witness for your glory. Thank you for all that you've done and what you are doing in your name. Service will conclude at the graveside. <clears throat>